the end of Halo 2, we thought it would be a really cool idea if we got a lot of people involved with making some more multiplayer maps. Most people spend their time in the multiplayer maps, not in the single player ones. The importance of all the different things you can do is wildly changing. It's easy to get the concept. I'm here to defend this base. Ten seconds remaining. So we split into four groups. Fresh ideas. Non-stop action. Bang, bang, bang. Grant the game of whack-a-mole. It's a lot of new eyes. Definitely see stuff that you're like, how the hell did they do that? I think you're exaggerating. Swing. Just like everybody else, we were getting a little bit tired of, of playing some of the same maps over and over, so it was a great opportunity to get more maps out there. Double kill. Triple kill. Kill tacular. Containment is a big map. It's definitely the biggest map in the downloadable content. Two team capture the flag, eight on eight. Take it. This map is so big, the Xbox can't even hold it. We are visiting the quarantine zone. These zones were created by the Sentinels in order to prevent the flood from escaping further and infecting even more of the Halo structure. It was supposed to be just a straight up conversion of Timberland from Halo PC. The bases are more intricate. Because they're basically the Sidewinder bases. And more interesting change it even further. More dynamic. Just change it all together. Two rocket launchers. There's also two sniper rifles. Two warthogs. A banshee. And then outside of your wall is a tank. We tried to do some things that the other big maps didn't, incorporating the tank, hopefully effectively this time. They sort of flesh out their ideas with Max for sort of riding shotgun over all of them, making sure that they're not getting too crazy. We were going to have uh, what we call boo bags. They would just be these clusters of these boogers all over the level that would explode and, and harm you. Max decided that they bounced too much, so he made them pretty static. If they're going to make a change for artistic reasons, it's really helpful when they also can think, how is this going to affect actual gameplay? Whenever you ask Cotton or uh, Paul about it, they get pretty upset because they like them the way they were. You wonder why this map took three months to make. There wasn't really any precedent for, for bouncing testicles of death. I hate video games. What? <laughs> Backwash is a humid environment. In all our other multiplayer maps, you can see that a player from a quarter mile away. Here, you can't. We knew we had to make a small, like, four-player Slayer-style map. The idea came up to use the Halo 1 Swamp as this foggy arena. Old and crusty Forerunner. We're, we're saying this is on the Delta Halo, and it's actually an area very similar to the place on the Alpha Halo where the Chief met Guilty Spark. In fact, we actually have the monitor of the Delta Halo. He's flying around the environment. We definitely were looking to encourage the short game so you'd be more inclined to use weapons like shotguns and the sword. It's very easy to spawn and instantly see where everybody's fighting because you see plasma bolts in the fog and you know exactly where everybody is, so you just go charging over there. And Nathan's favorite tactic is to get up here on this little metal protrusion, then he's just lobbing grenades down at people. I'm kind of the resident griefer. I kill everybody on my team, laughing the top of my lungs. Nathan's griefing is, is uh, well balanced by his lack of skill. Yeah, no one likes Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this map will be a success if people love to play Slayer Halo at its simplest form. It should be one of these places where it's just fun to find the high spots and gain elevation through jumping. And when you do that and you pull it off, um, I don't know, I feel like a Halo god. And we got glow bugs. It doesn't get any better than that. Terminal. It's a train terminal. It exists in New Mumbai. It's supposed to be Zanzibar Plus. What if we took Zanzibar to the next level? What would that map be? It's completely asymmetrical. There are two bases, but it's not a mirrored environment or an environment that is rotated, so it's identical on both sides. The nature of it is it's imbalanced. So the attackers have a starting location, and the defenders have a base, but they're not equal in like which one is easier to defend or easier to attack. The only real dynamic element is the train. If you play too close to the tracks, you'll die. 
most of our Halo 2 maps playing single flag CTF. The vehicles are fun, but they're not a key component of how you win or lose that. And we wanted to make a vehicle encounter significant. You cannot ignore the Wraith. The Wraith is a big deal. You need to take out the Wraith if you're an attacker. If you're a defender, you want to preserve the Wraith. Everything that we're thinking about is balance. We put a lot of thought into making sure that a guy on foot can destroy that vehicle. No rocket launcher. No rocket launcher. No rocket launcher. It's a big design issue. I think they've actually uh, softened on that position a little bit. There's now a rocket on terminal. OK, people who are good with the Wraith, we've added the rocket launcher back in the terminal, which we didn't want to do in the first place. We tried to specifically design this map so we didn't have to use the rocket launcher. But now, because people have gotten so good with the Wraith, the rocket launcher's back in there. It's pretty rare that you'll get people just sitting in a spot and being cowardly. I hate cowards. Death. This is a remake of Longest, one of the maps in Halo 1. It's supposed to be this dirty cargo freighter. Two parallel hallways with bases at either corner. You can see Earth. You can see the moon. I thought about that I really hated about Longest that I wanted to fix. The ladders really destroy the realism. I've never seen a ladder I like. You have this vertical motion, but you don't see your hands doing that. Oh, we got rid of all the ladders. Everybody hated ladders. The really nice thing about this map is that there's total mobility. It's a fairly simple map so that it's easy to navigate, easy to understand. One of the ways that you can get to the second floor from the ground floor is to take advantage of these boxes that are moving around. Gameplay-wise, they create a very huge change because they create this jumping path that you can get between the two levels on the map from any point. One of the interesting things that just kind of fell out of this design, and this is not intentional, if you were on the conveyor belt, even though you're moving faster than the motion sensor, if you're standing still, you don't show up. It has like this one thing that we've never had before, which is you can hide and actually end up in a different spot than you were, and the whole time you won't be on the motion sensor. I wanted to put the ladders back in, but make them slanted so that you didn't have the same horrible problems that you did. He never expressed that to yeah, us. Yeah, I, I never expressed that. <laughs> he well, would've would got shot down. Would've been a problem. <laughs> Relic, it's a big island. The original idea came from the very first Halo multiplayer map back on the PC. Four and four, um, that's kind of the sweet spot for that map. The more people, it gets a little more chaotic. We were looking for a asymmetric one flag CTF map that played differently than any of the others. It's designed specifically to have a unique experience for capture the flag. It's set up to have a side that is protecting the flag. So there's always an attacker and defender keeping the entire map in play at all times. It totally changes the way the two sides behave. One of the smart routes to go is down here by the beach because that's where the rocket launcher is. Both sides trying to fight to get that as quickly as possible. You take the quick route and run out in the open to get to the base. Or did you take the longer but safer route? I mean, there's a trade-off. We intentionally make it so that the fastest route is the straight line that's running the gauntlet. So it's risk versus reward. Scoping out over the entire island is really cool because you can see people coming up through the rocks. Killing spree, double kill. There's a contest to go and get the rocket launcher, much like there's a contest to get the sniper rifle. You, know, you have to make real conscious decisions about what's important to you to win this map. Gemini. Its origin is in Marathon. In Marathon Infinity, there was a map called Duality. That's the fundamental structure that we took. It's not really a symmetrical or asymmetrical map. It's an arena free-for-all map. We wanted it to feel wholly otherworldly. This isn't something for the rest of the Covenant. This is the Prophet's antechamber. The two rooms, the ramps in the lower lobby. The teleporters that let you rapidly move to another part of the map. The doors seem really mundane, but a door actually lets you play with a person. 
That's what this is, corridors, cool, moody lighting, lots of artfully well-placed weapons, and good combat, so that's the essence of a good ground pounder. Even walking slowly, I can cover the entire map in about 15 seconds. That makes it very difficult to actually mount a defense. Our engine is designed for a mix of different weapons that work at different ranges. You can only carry two. The reason you pick up two plasma rifles is not so you can squeeze both triggers at the same time, it's so that you can pulse them. Like you can fire one until it burns and then fire the other while the other one's cooling off. Because if you need to reload when you're dual wielding, then you're basically screwed. I really wanted to have a lot of small maps. Warlock had a characteristic of being four-way symmetrical. Radially symmetrical. It's designed to be completely equal. Warlock is, uh, is based on the original Halo 1 map, a Wizard. And for those that played Halo 1 multiplayer, this is going to be like an old friend. They're going to immediately walk into this map and be like, oh, I know what's happening. I thought it'd be fairly easy to get Warlock up to speed, considering that the geometry already existed. Uh, we had to mark off each base with a different color so that you wouldn't get lost. And it's, it's pretty easy to get lost in a place where every four of the corners look identical. The game is really giving you something that you look at and something that you hear. We have almost 36,000 pieces of audio that went into Halo 2. Territory control. With 64 surround sound voices. Double kill. And if you're playing multiplayer and you have a big battle going on around you, you are probably more than likely hitting that 60 to 64 voice um, limit pretty easily. Lost the lead. If you look at it and you think it should make sound, we try to make it make sound. I put some things like there's bats. No, no bats. So I think they're up in there somewhere. I'm sure, yeah. I mean, I, I know that we don't have any, so. Bats. No, no bats. Sanctuary is about a battle that takes place on the Delta Halo. You could envision Delta Temple being in the distance behind the cliff and behind the waterfall. It should look like a single player map, but play like a multiplayer map. It's old Forerunner architecture supported by some newer Forerunner metal structures. It's really important to us that people believe that they are real places in our universe. First is just a high level strategy, just a plan. Um, from there we go to paper design, which is the designer and the artist working together. It actually is a symmetrical map. Symmetrical is mirrored in some fashion, and it's an attempt to try to make things balanced. A map can feel balanced, but there's a subtle like sniper advantage to one side or the other. What it was designed for is CTF. Play taken. There's medium range weapons like the battle rifle. Carbine, the SMG, you got a Needler. Those are all symmetrically placed to give each team an uh, even playing field. Every time they take on one of those weapons or taking on a role, that's kind of the mentality that I take, you know, designing a space is are there good places for a player to assume those roles and be effective? And are there places for players to fight against that role as well? Turf. Turf is a medium to small map. Set in old Mombasa, sort of early in the invasion, before the stuff really starts hitting the fan. Old Mombasa was probably my favorite part in the single player in Halo 2. Seeing certain landmarks from the single player game in the distance, like the bridge, just gives it such a great feel. It's got lots of cover, lots of very small scale interconnections, more close quarters combat meant for a match between two small teams. We really wanted to work on a map that really featured a new game type that we had in Halo 2 called Territories. Territories sort of requires a map that is designed for the game. Territories is the game where the objective is to capture and control the territories. Territory control. As you control them, you gain time, and you win the game by having the most time. The more control you have, the more tenuous that control is. As you're controlling a larger area of the map, you have to divide your attention over a much greater space, so then it's easier for the underdog to come in. Territory lost. We have a street territory, which is being themed as a Marine headquarters. The opposite corner, we have a warehouse territory. And then at the third corner, we have a scarab. Although in Halo lingo, aren't they called plots? Uh, no, they're just territories. 
In the UI, doesn't it say plots? Well, it's called three plots for the three, three characters. Therefore, yes, in Halo. Am I being too verbose? <laughs> this is going to be the easiest map to navigate and learn. So everyone always wants to do a little bit more than they probably can. We always overshoot and then come back. Put it in, rip it out. This map has probably had the most work done on it of all the maps. It's insane, the detail that's on here. This is probably my favorite Halo map thus far. It's awesome, I love this map. I like it. It's a fun map, and I did no work. <laughs> Territory control. As a game developer, you really get to enjoy two games. One is the game of creating the systems and the art itself, and then the other one is to actually play test it. The rest of the staff is working on all these maps. Uh, what, what's the animation team going to be doing? Part of this process was getting everybody to take on a new challenge and even expand those skills in new ways that they hadn't thought of before. So that was a great opportunity to get a cinematic together. We looked at the way we combined animation and sound and everything else into the cinematics in Halo 2 and how we can make that process better. We didn't feel like our pipeline was really well thought out and we wanted to go through it again and come up with new tools. We we're all like, well, let, let's do a short film. <laughs> Status! I wanted to do something that kind of paralleled what happened in the game. The Marines at the beginning of Earth City is one of those kind of tangents that you see the beginning of and then you see the end of, but you never really hear what happened. The third pelican, you know, kind of flies by and then halfway through that level you see that same pelican crash on the beach and you meet up with the Marines that were in it, but you never really found out what happened to them. It felt like a, a good place where you can tie in both the beginning and the end to actual gameplay. Just placing the Master Chief in the scene and this shot that I'm working on right now is the very first shot. This shot right here is where the Pelican has just crashed. You'll see phones checking uh, check the corpse of uh, O'Brien. We're actually going to be able to fly the Pelican around in a space and capture 5.1 audio of it and be able to embed that in the cinematic in a way that we weren't able to in the game engine. That's actually me. I'm the one with the plasma and that's Jeremy over here. And Bill's dead, of course. I don't... <laughs> the Jackal is a good character. We killed Bill off pretty quickly. What do you think? Hollywood? It is going to be pre-rendered, so it's a little bit different than the cinematics that occur in-game. We're still using the game engine to render it, but since it's not rendering in real time, we're able to do a little, you know, more effects and more lighting stuff. Oh, everybody is really getting to do the things that they love to do, to work on the things that they love working on, because it was something that we were doing for fun. It was, it was a learning exercise. It was a, just a lot of really good experience for everybody on the team. We have a long road ahead of us, I, I won't lie, but... Uh... Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, it's actually a really fun time to be working here. I would definitely say this is wet the whistle for, for what comes next. We better get moving. Agreed.